Justin Brazo has impressed enough to get another shot on the second line. Morgan Geeky isn't playing well enough, so it's a surprise, though, that Tyler Johnson hasn't been signed yet. How will the Bruins fare against the struggling Philadelphia Flyers? So buckle up, Bruins fans. I'm here to give you the latest info on your beloved Boston Bruins. If you've been liking my Bruins content, please leave me a like and subscribe. If you've already done so, thank you, and let's get into it. Yesterday, Montgomery announced that Justin Brazo was going to get another shot at playing on the right side with Charlie Coyle and Brad Marchand. During the Bruins' 4-3 overtime win over the Toronto Maple Leafs, Montgomery moved Patra off the wing and put him back at center during the third period, which is Patra's natural position. I didn't think Patra played bad on that line at all, but my guess is Monty didn't like what he saw from the third line without Patra down the middle. Brazo, who has scored in his last two games since being a healthy scratch after the Bruins' loss in Utah, is getting another chance on that second line. At the time, it was a head-scratcher to me because Brazo appeared to be one of the players on the Bruins, besides the fourth line, that was bringing pace each game they played in. Brazo's game against his former team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, was his best performance of the season. His goal was due to hard work and determination and going to the net because, as he's almost done all season, he's been playing the right way. Montgomery rewarded him in that game by giving him the most minutes he has seen all season with 14. Montgomery echoed that when talking to the media, saying, He's getting into the areas that he has success in. His goal is to be the best example of it. But on the power play, too, he was owning the net front. He knows what he is and he's played to what he is. Tonight against the Flyers will be Brazo's second addition on the second line as he's played on it against Utah, and the next game, he was a healthy scratch. Brazo isn't taking this opportunity lightly though, saying, I've been through this before. I've been up and down my entire career. It's about knowing who you are and what you do well on the ice and never trying to be somebody you're not. I always go out there knowing exactly what I need to do to help the team. Brazo has worked hard for every opportunity his entire career because the 26-year-old who is 6'5", 220 pounds, was never drafted in the NHL and was signed by the Toronto Maple Leafs after playing in the ECHL in the 2019-20 season for the Newfoundland Growlers. He played five more years in the minors before even getting a chance in the NHL. His net front presence is what I love about him, and he's been using it to his advantage during the time here in Boston this season. Brazo is well aware of his skill set, though, saying, I know I'm not the fastest player on the ice, but that doesn't mean you can't play fast. Moving pucks quick, being hard on the forecheck, and keeping the ozone time, that's what I have to do. I don't think anything should change, Brazo continued. I just got to do what I do best. Make some room out there for those guys and try and be hard on the forecheck to help get pucks back so that when I'm making plays, I'm there for second opportunities. It has been a revolving door on the second line this season, and I would love to know what the Bruins truly thought was going to happen when they let DeBrusque walk this offseason. I guess they saw something, though, as DeBrusque has struggled in Vancouver. So far this season, only registering four assists in his first seven games and playing with some very high-skilled players in Vancouver. If the plan was for Lysel to fill that role, then I'd have to say that was a bad judgment call from the Bruins head office and their second option of Morgan Geeky has not worked out at all. Geeky is still in the lineup tonight and will be on the right side with the third line with Patra and Frederick, but I think his leash is very small right now with his coach. Montgomery was asked about Geeky's plays and didn't mince words, saying Geeky needs to play better. Geeky was given a huge opportunity this season to play on the second line and has played anything but well. Last season, he had a career high in points with 39 and 17 of them being goals. It would have been easy to think that he would take a step in his career if given the opportunity, and the opposite has happened. When Montgomery was asked if he could elaborate on some specific things Geeky could do, he gave this, and the list is big. Being relentless, being on top of pucks, knowing who you are, playing to your strengths, not being results-oriented. I talked about it earlier, there are individuals still that are focused on results, and you can't. Results should not factor in to your preparation. It's human nature that it does. I think if someone is in a job and they're expecting a promotion and they're focused on a promotion and they're not doing their daily tasks until that promotion, well, you're not going to be doing your job. People keep evaluating you, whether you're an athlete or whatever your job you have. So far this season, Geeky has one assist in eight games and is minus four. Maybe tonight's game against the Flyers is his last chance because I'm still surprised the Bruins haven't signed Tyler Johnson yet. Maybe while I'm making this video, they will announce it, but I still feel like the signing is inevitable right now. For tonight's matchup, the changes are Brazo up on the second line with Patra at center on the third line, and the defense pairings stay the same. I don't think there's been one game this season where we don't see some sort of change. No news on the starter tonight, and if it isn't Corpusallo, then that tells me Montgomery has zero faith in him. And he hasn't played him since October 16th against Colorado. 
which the Bruins did win. Even though the Bruins won the game against the Leafs, Montgomery isn't taking the Flyers lightly and wants to see the Bruins play better. When asked what they need to work on, he said, our puck pressure. Our puck pressure last game was the best it's been, but it's still not where it needs to be. I would not come close to describing our team as relentless. And that's where we want to get to. It's more forwards working in the offensive zone and the neutral zone so the D-man can have better gaps. Forwards back off, D-man have to back off. The third period, the last 15 minutes in the third period, we backed off. That's not who we want to be. Wherever the puck is, someone's got to be pressuring the puck. Just can't let them carry the puck for 10 to 15 feet. It should never happen with the way we play. And we've just got to get better at that or having a relentless pursuit attitude. We did a lot of really good things in the first two periods, and it led to a lot of, we had our most grade A scoring chances five on five in a game. The Flyers are two, six and one going into their matchup tonight, and a player to watch for the Flyers out there tonight will be Matvey Michkov, who is second on the team in scoring with nine points. The Flyers may be struggling, but if the Bruins take them lightly, we could be in for a barn burner tonight. That's a wrap on today's video. To stay up to date on all the news surrounding the Boston Bruins, please subscribe and drop me a like. If news breaks surrounding the Boston Bruins, be sure to check out the channel. If you've already subscribed to the channel, thank you, and I'll see you next time.